Okay, good morning everyone. I'm so excited um, for today. Um, so I am welcomed here with Keris. Um, I met Keris many, many years ago and the reason why I wanted to do these episodes, especially throughout lockdown, is because I think especially in these times it's great for women in business or women that are about to start and launch a business to pull together. Um, if there's anything we can learn from each other, um, you know, it's just great to have that platform, isn't it? I first met Keris, I think it was when I was doing Beverly Fashion Week. That may have been the first time, Keris, but that was a long yeah, time well, ago. Uh, in our youth. <laughs> yes. Yeah, free all the children and everything yeah, else. But um, <laughs> I, was, I was so impressed with, um, firstly, I just thought, what an amazing, lovely person. And then to just see how successful you know, you are, you know, as a, as a family, um, it was just so inspirational and to see uh, the team that you lead with DeLacy. Um, so yeah, I've always kind of watched your journey and uh, really enjoyed watching you on Rich House Poor House. That was amazing, <laughs> quite emotional to watch um, knowing you as a person. So I thought, why not get you on for the first episode and um, yeah, just share a little bit about you with the world and then if there's anything that you found like really helped you over the years in business, that it might just be that one little nugget that someone takes away and that impacts them massively. Um, so kind of, how, how are you at the moment anyway? Because obviously we're, we're just started lockdown. Yeah, uh, I'm good I'm good because I'm not doing homeschooling. <laughs> I was so bad at that, I was rubbish. <laughs> It's the patience, isn't it? And because I think when the kids are at school, I mean, I, you know, the, the reports I get from them is like glowing reports. And then when I'm trying to do it, they're like, no, I don't, don't want to do that. I need a drink. I need a wee. I'm like, oh, for the love of God. <laughs> so I have to say that made a big difference because it was a stressful time, the last lockdown. And I'm sure a lot of people and yourself would be the same. Having the kids at home, and trying to run a business and trying to run a home and you've got all these different hats haven't you that you're trying to do at the same time as well as you know mentally I think we were all kind of shaken by it and it was a scary time where I think lockdown two were a bit more like we've got this we've done it before we're all good um so yeah I think it is um it's a big difference to uh yeah. to what's going on now so so yeah good at the minute <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. It's, I know I think when you look back now and you think wow how on earth because for us as a family it was six months of six yeah. of us you look back and think how did we do that um but you do don't you? you just get on with it but yeah I did not manage the whole sc home schooling for a lot of time either um uh, with such different age groups in the house yeah <laughs> and it was the when the little ones see what the big ones are doing and then they want to get involved and you're like oh no you can't do it and then they're ripping it you know I remember a couple of times Clover grabbing um Cooper's paper and ripping it and then he's in you know angry and you're like oh god right that's it we're not doing it anymore well, let's go outside and play football <laughs> yeah and that is sometimes just as good isn't it if not you know better for their well-being than them all being stressed out and mum being really stressed out as well because then we're no use to anyone are we <laughs> <laughs> oh well I've got a few questions for you today but we'll just see where the chat takes us um but the first thing is because obviously you've been in business I'm guessing for some time now yeah so relating to um De Lacy especially you know was that something that started as a job and a passion and developed into a business or have you always been quite business-minded and entrepreneurial from being quite young would you I say I would say it's funny because before I've really thought about it, I would have said that I wasn't business minded. Um, and then you kind of look back and I was like, well, actually at school um, from a really young age, I, I, I remember being, I lived in, in Portugal when I was younger. And do you remember back in the day when we had those braids that were in your hair, of like the different, the, the different cotton? Oh yeah, we all love those, didn't we? And uh, and I remember sat watching the people doing it on the, you know, like in the markets and things. And I watched them and watched them until I knew how to do it. And then I bought all the stuff and then I went to school and I, I, and I did it at school and people paid me to do it. And so you kind of go, actually, yeah, I have always had that mindset because for someone so young, so I'll have been what? I'll have been... 10 11 maybe 
Yeah, I was about 10 when we moved there. So from a, for a 10 year old to sort of realize that I could watch someone learn and then make a profit from it. It's funny how it was just, it is obviously in there somewhere that it has always, it's always been a little seed in there that's, that's sort of grown and grown. Um, and then, you know, as time went on, there was always something that I wanted to do where I could sell something or, you know, make some money. And I didn't even, you know, you just think that it's just kids. And then you talk to other people and like, oh, no, no, we didn't do that. It's like, oh, oh, just me then. <laughs> so I think it has, yeah, it has always been there. And it's funny, isn't it, when you hear stories of <clears throat> really successful businessmen and women, their stories generally start when they're really young. And I, I had totally really forgotten until you mentioned that. But I remember getting loads of books from my house and setting up a library in the shed, and, like renting them out for 20 pence a time. Like, it's, I think it is something that's in you, isn't it? And you can go and you can work for other people and do jobs, but it's almost like a pulling. I've always felt pulled back to entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't think, and back then, I suppose it wasn't really named, was it? You know, the words entrepreneur wasn't really used very much. And so and my parents weren't uh, in business at all. And so you don't really see that spark because it's not really around you. And I think it's more, much more now, which I think is fantastic, that they're pushing people to do their own businesses and to, to you know, give it a try. And I think that is amazing from very young you know young ages to do it um and that's you know that is an, a, an incredible thing uh, but back then it wasn't though was it it was very much you had a job you got a job and that was your job forever really wasn't it um mm. where that security is not there anymore so i suppose the the um the entrepreneur that that risk is coming out a little bit more which yeah i think it's fantastic yeah, it's, um, there's an amazing documentary called The Rise of the Entrepreneur, and it's just the shift that, you know, the world's having. Um, and I think now they're teaching a bit more enterprise in schools. That's great, because I did business studies right up to A level, but never really learned how to consider launching my own business and what that would be. It was more just the uh, logistics and the, you know, the pen to paper type stuff. So, yeah, it's nice to see people, you know, being a bit braver, stepping out on a limb and and going for it because you know life's too short isn't it not to not to try you know what you love um so the next thing I want to ask you is obviously you've had huge success with De Lacy Spa in Beverly tell us about the award that you won in March and how did your team react to the achievement well <laughs> it was a bit um it's a bit sad really this story <laughs> Because we literally, I mean, we did the build up to it. And, and I remember you, 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 you know, you apply for it. So people have to vote for you and then um, you submit your evidence of why you should win. And it was the case of like, what can I do that's not going to be the same as everyone else? And I think that was my mindset was everyone's going to write an email and put pictures on of this is why I should win and, blah, 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 and you know, and try and explain it. And, uh, and I thought as a judge, after so many, that would be quite, that sounds awful this, but it'd be a bit boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> because you're just doing the same, you know, reading the same sort of thing. So I was like, right, what can we do that is completely different that will entertain rather than it being, you know, another, basically another piece of paper. So we came up with um, the De Lacy Ladies Loose Women's Style and we mm -hmm. sat in a room and um, and we, we, we put questions we all wrote some questions uh, there's a, a few of the staff and we all put questions into a bowl and then we picked them out and read the question and answered it so it was really natural and it was just us talking about things that we'd done in the past and um and it just seemed to be a, a lot more of a comfortable thing to do I'm, I'm I really I'm not very good at doing the well I'm great and I should win because I've done this and I I, I get really uncomfortable with it and that way it was more of a well we did this and you did that and so and so so it was more of a flow to it so that was fantastic um and in fact I've got my mug here which I still use my De Lacy mug because we were like loose women's style we got our own mugs which is just oh, brilliant yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we um obviously 
we went to the awards and they'd put us in the wrong category. So I emailed them about, you know, a week before just to let them know. And then, and didn't hear anything back. So you're like, all right, okay, well, but I don't know if they've got it or not got it, but hey ho, it is what it is. And we went and our category and our name was up and we didn't win. And it was like, oh, right, okay, well, that's a bit sad, never mind. And they had actually moved us into the right category, but not put our name, not taken our name off the other one. So we were all really down on the table and it was like, oh, well, you know, it's a good night and we've just got to see it like that, you know, as you do. Come on, you know, we've just got to think positive. Yeah. Never mind, there's always next year. And to the point where Phil actually went um, to the toilet and then they said my name on the thing. And it was like, oh, <laughs> God, we've won and it was the biggest one as well it was the biggest um prize of the night you know the biggest award of the night and uh, and poor phil came back from the loo to find us all up on the stage screaming <laughs> so yeah he's like sat down. <laughs> oh. and you actually got best salon in the uk at the hair and beauty was didn't you top yeah. salon yeah. Oh, it was just absolutely amazing and then the sad part is is then we came back obviously like on this complete high and then within a couple of days we were having a conversation of what we're going to do with the salon and we're going to have to close because of the virus and it was a real like yay oh my god and it was a sort of like back to reality and so we haven't really we didn't embrace it as much as we could have done because that should have lasted you know quite a long time that that feeling but unfortunately it was so quick with everything going on from the, you know, the closing of, of the salons. Um, well, it started off obviously with, it was just more and more, it was going to happen. It was going to happen. And we were preparing for it so much. And then, yeah, we were closed and then we didn't see each other for months and months. So yeah. an amazing night and an amazing memory. And it kind of makes it that it was just such a hoo-ha of us being in the wrong one. And then the next thing we were at this low and then all of a sudden we were, we we're winning. So so yeah, definitely. Roller <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. oh, and I bet you're really missing your team because you seem to have such a, like a team unit going on there, like a, an amazing group of people. Yeah, absolutely. And they are just, they're just fantastic, all of them. And through this whole thing, oh, they've, they've made me cry so much. It's just ridiculous um, because they've just been there, you know, a few times when it's like, well, I'll just go in and do that. Um, you know whatever it is and that well no no you're not doing it on your own so you do then and we'll and they've made sure that I've had help because you take it on as a as an owner it's my responsibility and um, it's been lovely that people have been happy to go right no I'm I'm going to be there and I will be there to help you and support you which you know for anyone is just a fantastic thing isn't it oh absolutely and it obviously delays is a big part of their life and they Know, love love the business as much as yourself and obviously with you having such a big team um I'm guessing like leadership is a big part of what you do like would you say you've got a specific leadership style is it something that came naturally to you or is it something you've really had to to work on to lead you know that big group I uh, definitely had to work on I'm not um I wouldn't say I am naturally as I know what I want and I know where I want to go and I guess it's trying to then push that to the full team that that vision um, and I think that's sort of the hardest thing that I've had to go through because it's okay me doing we've done a lot of um, you know these these conferences and um, you know going to see motivational speakers and business ones and all of these different things uh, and that's great for me but I needed to then pass that on to the team. And I think that's been one of my biggest obstacles is public speaking. Um, is It just uh, it just petrified me. Um, I'm better now. I still get nervous. And even doing things like this, I still get that like, oh God, before I go on panic. And then it's amazing how you, you do get into your flow. Um, and I think you doubt yourself, don't you? Always. Uh, of this well I don't know anything and I'm not going to know the answers and then someone asks you a question you're like well oh it's this and I do know my stuff and I'm okay um so I think that's my biggest thing was doing it because I didn't a long time uh, because I was so frightened and then it was like right if I want to grow the only way I'm going to do this is by getting on with it just get on with it 
and I think that's the best thing you can do and if you fall flat on your face then you learn from it and you pick yourself back up and you get on with it again and 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 most of the time when you're doing something like this the people who are watching don't want you to fail so they're not going to because that's it we're all frightened of someone not liking what we've done or being you know someone being negative towards us aren't we because as a naturally we want people to like us i think that's just um it's just who we are as humans isn't it we are pack um animals and uh, and so that that fear of someone saying you're not very good at this was the biggest thing that was was in the way and then when you take that way of like well actually the people in that room want you to do well so they're not gonna go well that was rubbish it's it kind of gives you a bit of um, a bit of fight in you of like, yeah, I can do this. And I did the first one and I was an emotional wreck before and I was an emotional wreck for two, two days after. I just kept crying for some bizarre reason. It was my team. Um, but, it, you know, when you get a, a room of 20 people, you suddenly go, oh, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> and I've got to stand here and do this. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, no, that, I'm okay. I'm all right with this. So, so yeah, the more I've done it, the better I've got. I was going to say, it almost becomes such a big thing in your mind, doesn't it? Public speaking. It was, it was one of my biggest fears. Like even doing my teacher training years ago, if there was a presentation, I just didn't turn up. I just couldn't deal with the anxiety of speaking in front of adults. I could teach children all day long. Um, so I was exactly the same. The first time I had to stand up and train 10 people, I had to leave the room before. I was just, you know, when you feel like you have an out-of-body experience with yeah. that. And then, right. and then you do it. And yeah I think when you know that the people in the room want you to do well and even if you don't they're still going to support you anyway yeah. it's almost like you you do it for them and yeah. you take yourself out of the equation don't you and that's always helped helped me with public speaking if it's serving and helping someone else you kind of get over the the nerves um you really reminded me there's a book I'm reading at the moment called Lead a Shift and it talks about shifting from people pleasing and that worry about what everyone thinks all the time into actually leading people and helping them get results as well and it's just amazing so if there's anyone watching that's um having to you know or being forced to kind of grow into a leader through your business at the moment it's amazing um so yeah so the next thing i wanted to ask you is um, so I, I watched you on Rich House, Poor House. Um, it's just an amazing series. Um, what was that like? Sorry, my washing machine just kicked in downstairs. <laughs> so much background noise. Um, what was that like as an experience? Because to watch, it looks like an emotional experience, very humbling. Like, has that affected the whole family? And is it still something that you kind of carried forward with you? I think you it will it does naturally you don't sort of think oh well that specific thing has affected that but it, it's just a natural way of your mindset slightly changes um I mean it was something we did we did because you know it's just like uh, why not let's do something a bit different and see what happens um when we first started out with business because my husband's in business as well and obviously you know having the the two um, two people in business in one household is sometimes a little bit um, intense, shall we say. <laughs> and so it is that thing of like, when we first started, we, we we went through the, what will happen if things go wrong? Because you've got to think, right, worst case scenario, if things go wrong, what will it be like? What will we do? And I think very early on, we realized that as long as we're together, then we'll be okay and and so that was our mindset at the very very you know back in the day when we first started so then this came up and it was like well this could be the because i mean it can always go wrong you know the in business you're always at the risk of losing everything aren't you you know and i, and I think that's something that you you accept very early on and um so we said, well, you know, let's try it. and it'd be good for the kids because the kids have never had to worry about money or, you know, anything. So it'd be good for them to see what it's like as well. Oakley was a bit too young, uh, but Cooper very much was was understood. And he's a, he's a deep thinker, um, is Cooper. So we decided, yeah, let, let's give it a try. And it was just, it was a bit like therapy, actually. <laughs> 
because they ask you things that you have never thought of. You know, why did you make that decision to do that? And you're like, well, I just thought I did it. I don't really know. You know, it's just as a part of a path, I think when you are in business is you just want the next thing, don't you? And you want to grow all the time. And so for someone to ask you why it was, it was, it was sort of out of, out of the ordinary for us to question it. It was, oh, uh, of oh course, I don't know what did give us the strength to do it. Um, and I think by the time, you know, after a lot of crying, I'm really pleased that my crying didn't get put on as much as Phil's. <laughs> he made me cry when he was crying. I was sobbing. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was one of those that makes you really think about how lucky we are with our upbringing, um, how lucky we are that we've got um, family that's very much... Uh, supports us in what we do and we couldn't have, I don't think we would have made those decisions if we didn't have that if it all falls down we knew we'd always have you know either mum and dad at either side to fall back onto as in not necessarily financially but a roof over our head and you know to to you know hold you and go right come on pull yourself together and, and my parents are very much very hard working strong work ethic of like well you just go on with it don't you don't be ridiculous off you go and I think that's what you need sometimes is someone to give you that kick up the bum to say you can do this and you just need to get on with it and I think that's the biggest thing that came out of the show for us is seeing where that came from and then also that affects your parenting then because you go right well if I felt like that I need to make sure that I do that for my children that we make sure that they've got a good work ethic and that they try whether they fail or succeed is not the point of it is it it's the going out there and giving it a go and that's that's the biggest thing I think we got from there um and, and one of the stories that um really sticks in my head was Cooper um he kept asking what the money situation was like and are we on budget and I mean he was I think he was nine yeah, he was like eight or nine then. And it's like, you know, well, have we got enough food? I was like, yeah, we're all, you know, we're fine with food. We've got food for the, right. And um, will we have any spare? And I was like, right. Why are you asking this? What What's in your head that's, you know, that because it's all these little dots that you need to connect with him to say, right, there's, there's something that's there that you're not asking me. And he said, well, at school, we need to pay for a mug to make this mug, but I don't know if we're going to have enough money to do it. And it was that moment I thought, you have never thought of this before because I pay for everything online. You know, as you do, you get the email, pay for this, so you go into that and you pay for it all and that's all done. He's never thought about it before. And I thought, what a fantastic lesson for him that not everyone has it all paid for and it's not all automatically done. And he's had to really think about it, but he didn't ask me for the money to do something at school. And it was just a real poignant moment for us of what we're doing is worth it. You know, the, the sacrifices we make are worth it because of those moments. Um, and, and a great lesson for him as well that not everyone, you know, gets, not that he gets what he wants, but that has the, the money to do everything so so yeah it was a it was a huge lesson and like I say it was a lot of therapy a lot of tears <laughs> but we came out of it really strong and it was lovely yeah and you're still quite close to the family aren't you Built yeah. a really good yeah. There. Yeah, yeah and I love how much you inspired the mum because she had aspirations and sometimes exactly like what you said about your parents encouraging you. Sometimes it's not a parent, it can be a friend, it can be someone that you spontaneously meet like yourself, who just says, yeah, go for it. I believe you can do it, you yeah. know, be, and being prepared, prepared to fail forward. I think that is one of the biggest things, isn't it? People, when they want to launch a business, they're scared of failing, but actually there's, there's hundreds of fails along the way and it's just lessons and there's oh. quickly, yeah, we just better and better. So it's not being afraid of that and almost embracing it, isn't it? It's just part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is the biggest thing for us is those fails that there. We failed in loads of stuff in different things. We've tried different things, and you've got to try it because if you don't, the thought of 
not knowing is worse than just going right well we tried it it didn't work out and you just maneuver and that's the big thing isn't it in business it's about maneuvering and I guess that's what this time is showing us now is you have to be able to change your business slightly to, to turn it slightly so that it does work um you know for us the salon's closed yeah but we're doing other things instead and now we're looking at the retail and doing online shops and and so you have to sort of you've got to pivot slightly sometimes and that is that that's how you'll get through the good times and the bad times is being able to change and not be just stuck on one path if you can flow with it it's a lot less stress <laughs> Absolutely. I love that you've used the word pivot. We use that quite a lot in the team. You know, if something's not working, you know, just pivot, go in a, you know, a slightly different direction. And I think that is a massive part of just being an entrepreneur, isn't it? That you are, you're resourceful. So rather than looking at, um, I think sometimes as an, an employee mindset, we can look at things like, oh, I can't do that or I can't afford this or that's not going to work for me. Whereas if you kind of switch the business mindset on, you say, how can I make that work? How can I adapt? What resources do I have to, you know, branch out in a new direction? And it's just two opposite mindsets, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And it is, it's about, um, I mean, failure um, and, and the, the change of the mind is, it's a process that you need to go through, I think. It's not something that comes very naturally to people um, because when something goes wrong, you automatically go into this, oh God, disappointment, sadness, angry. And what we say in our house is that's okay, but you've only got a limited amount of time to be like that. Otherwise you're getting on my nerves. And, and sometimes, you know, and we all take, me and Phil take it in terms of who's in that mindset, you know, when something's gone wrong with him and I'm like, right, I'm giving you today, but if you're like this tomorrow, you're out. <laughs> Because you're annoying me now. So go over there and have your little pity party. Poor you, poor you. And then come back tomorrow and sort it out. And I think you need to be able to, you need to be able to be sad and angry and get it, get it out. But then you need to go, right, okay, I've done that now. And, and I didn't gain anything from it. I've not moved anything further on from it. So I've done it. And now I'm going to do this or that or the other. And, and changing, like you say, you pivot to a different place. And that gives you another focus, which then gets the, the motivation and the, the excitement comes back because the, you've then got another route that you're going down. So I think it's, it's important that people have those feelings because you can't be positive all the time. And I think that's something that's very big at the minute, isn't it? Of like, you know, um, there's just so many slogans now of, you know, don't let your crown slip and all of these things, which are great, but it is also okay to just be upset annoyed angry all those things that that is okay just don't don't dwell on it have it enjoy it and then you know move forwards and I think that's I think that's sort of being forgotten at the minute um is to, to have that time it's almost like a repairing time isn't it your mind needs that time to to reset repair and then go right okay I'm done with that now let's move forwards and as long yeah. as you move forwards that's the thing yeah it's like bounce back ability isn't it but I love that you brought that up and I was going to ask you um about like self-care and things like because I'm massively into that obviously I launched my yoga retreats a couple of years ago and that was just like a little thing on the side because I feel like people need to look after themselves and self-care and taking a moment for them and especially when you're in business and yeah. you can have these ideas and things going and you've got you know a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, it's important sometimes just to reflect and accept and you, you can't have the highs without the lows can you so it's almost just taking all of that on like do you have a specific like self-care routine like what do you like to do in your downtime or you know what do you do to kind of maybe switch off from work um it's funny isn't it I think I don't think you ever switch off ever never <laughs> because there's always it's always there isn't it thinking but I think it's, it turns from a work to a um I guess sort of a pleasure side of it when you're in a good space um we go on holiday a lot and the reason we go on holiday is a lot is because when we're here 
you slip back into, oh, well, I'll just bob into work. I'll just do this. I'll just do that. So if we leave the country, not that we can at the minute, um, it means that you are then switching off. So that is a really big thing for us is, is our holidays. And we always said from very early on, we, would, we wouldn't work the school holidays. And we are very lucky that we're in that position. Um, we've worked to get to it, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to be. Um, my big thing is on an evening, I don't work on an evening and I can't, uh, I'll do, I'll check a few emails. I'll check, say the appointment book, but as a general, I try not to, because as soon as that little bit sneaks in, then I'll message someone and then someone messages me and then I'll, oh, oh well, I'll just think about, and then my whole night's gone. And then I'm not sleeping on a night because I've then I've switched back on again. So for me, when the kids go to bed, then it's a case of, right, that's it. You know, I'll come downstairs, I'll watch some rubbish TV, you know, and it's just a case of it's having that time, isn't it? And making sure that that time is there to go, I am not working. Um, and I think as well, I, and you'll find it, when you're a mum and you're working, it, you, it's a really difficult um, separation of the two. And to be able to say, right, I am not um, a mum right now. I am working and vice versa, I think is really important because I found I was just trying to do everything. I've just been rubbish at everything because I'd be reading my emails, but they wanted a drink and then they'd knock over a drink because I wasn't watching them doing. And then I've just done the email wrong because I was, and you just like, right, that I can't do it. I know women can multitask, but there's a limit. <laughs> I did that for years. I did that for years thinking, oh, I'll just try and be superwoman and do it all at once. And you just, um, you're not present in any place and you're not doing anything particular well, particularly yeah. well. And I would say for me, it's only really been in the last maybe two or three years that I've become really disciplined with, you know, this is work time, focus on that. This is now time just to play. This is now time for me to have some self-care and almost like scheduling it in. Yeah, um, yeah. And for me, it's more, I, I really have to get that full hour of peace is to get up earlier in the morning than the kids. Like, I quite like doing that. Um, some people, it's late in the evening and having that total shut off time. But I think it's having respect for yourself, isn't it? And I would say for anyone starting a business, I see so many people fall into that trap of just trying to do everything at once, especially working from home. You know, I've got four kids, so I don't want to be trying to work while they're around and they want so it's like no this is work time this is mum time this is me time and it does make a huge difference I think to your relationship with your children as well because you are there and it's like right what we're going to do what we're going to play what we and you want to do things where when you're trying to work and and you, you start of putting something in front of them for them to do and then at the end of the day you don't feel like you've had that connection with them because you've not like you say you're not present and you're not fully fully there and um, I, I, it was it was a few years ago. We were having some work done at the at the salon, and um, the it was a plumber, I think it was. And he um, he really snapped. I was really annoyed. He really snapped to me. He's like, "You're so hard to get hold of." I said, "I'm not. If you ring me on my days that I'm in work, and that's it. Because otherwise, I am with my children. And who's more important? Are you more important or my children?" And he kind of like stepped back and he's like, "Oh, right, okay." So I was like, "On these days, that that that." You can ring me at any time and I will answer the phone. Otherwise, I'm not answering the phone to you. And it was very much, he knew all of this. And that's why I scheduled him in on those days. Um, because you have to have that discipline to say, no, I'm not, I'm not at everyone's beck and call. And I think that can really easily happen. Um, and especially with a big team as well, where they're just like, oh, can I just ask you this? And can I, but that just asking you one person but I've got 20 people doing that plus, you know, all the, the reps and this, that, and the other, it ends up being a lot. So you have to do that. No, I'm not doing that today. And if you want me to do anything, if you want an answer from me, you need to, um, you need to do it on the right day because otherwise I'm, you know, I can't do it. And I think having that strength, and I think it comes with age as well. <laughs> Where you're just like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not. <laughs> well, you've got to, people will respect you and your time more. 
And then they'll also learn from that watching you and be like, yeah, actually, maybe I need to be a bit more disciplined and respectful of my time because it's, yeah. it's the most important thing. We have time, isn't it? And using it correctly. Um, and people I- are really shocked that I don't have any notifications on my phone. You know, and I've got a lot of team and clients I um, have to work with and they're like I don't want to bother you bother you I'm like it's impossible to bother me because I have no notifications on <laughs> I'm sat down to do my work I will give you my full focus and I will get back to you and I'll get back to you properly but you know to have whatsapp and facebook and instagram notifications going off all day I would literally be sat like this while the kids are <laughs> so it's just like no you know and I it's, important. it's really important yeah I love Miss um, Mrs. Rachel Hollis. I don't know if anyone follows Rachel Hollis. She's um, like a motivational speaker. And um, I saw her live and she said just this one liner and it was the thing that made me switch how I was operating my business and the kids. And it was just be, be present where your feet are. So if you're at work, yeah. you know, don't worry about the kids, focus on your work and do the best there. If you're with the kids, just fully immerse yourself in that. And I just thought, I'm just going to remind myself of that all the time. Yeah, that is a brilliant one, actually. I like that. And it's so, it is so true because you end up being half, because you're only half there, half mum or half, you know, business person, work person or whatever, whatever it is that you do. You end up being half of what you should be and rather than being 100%. Yeah, and mum guilt is the worst, so you don't oh. need any of that extra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different episode, that one. <laughs> what can I say? We'll leave that for another time. Um, so what else did I want to ask you? Um, I think we've covered really about having the balance. Oh, tell me a little bit more, and anyone watching, um, about your more recent business as well, with the stretch mark oil. What is that? So, so this is something that started off, obviously, um, having children you see things differently don't you when you're pregnant it's just like this whole new world that you, you live in um and I was very aware of stretch marks obviously I'm in the skincare uh, industry so stretch marks was a, a not a big thing but I was very aware of it of what I could do how I could you know treat um and, and help prevent any stretch marks um, and so this started, obviously Cooper's 11 now, um, of me looking at what products are out there, what's in them, how they work, and, and it sort of developed. And I, I have ginormous babies. Um, I'm just huge. When I get pregnant, I just absolutely, I'm just ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and so they were all sort of nine pound babies. And, and I, the, the, my, apparently my placenta sat at the back or something. So it meant that I was further out. I don't know if this is what they were telling me. So I was big and I was trying so hard to say, right, how can I treat my skin? I know a lot of it is genetics. I know a lot of it is, you know, just the way that your skin is. But I do honestly believe that how you treat your skin is so, so important. Um, I've got a dry skin, my, par- my, my, my parents, my mum has got stretch marks. Um, and so it was like, right, well, technically I should get them. And, um, and I didn't. And it was this thing where, you know, when you know things, but you assume everyone else does. And I think we all get this, don't you? So, well, obviously it's, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it was Phil said, so is this like what everyone does, what you do? I was like, I don't really know. I've not thought of it like that. And I really took it for granted what I knew as a therapist and the years that I'd had the experience. So long story, long entrance to that (laughs) was that I was using a body brush, quite a firm body brush and um, the Japanese camellia oil. Now, when I'd read different, different products that are out there for stretch marks, there was a lot of other things in shall we say things that don't really want to be putting I mean uh, my body is not a temple when I'm not pregnant but when I am I'm pretty good you know when you know that there's a baby in there then and it's your responsibility I think you become very aware of what you're putting on your skin and what you're eating and what you're doing so I started reading the packaging of all of this it's like I don't really like the idea of putting that on my skin and what is that? Why is that in there? And you start to question it a lot. 
And I know with, with your background that that's a, a big thing, isn't it? Of what is actually in the products that you put on your skin. Um, and so I decided to launch my own. <laughs> I'll just do it myself. So it's called Okasan which is it's um because it's a japanese camellia oil and there's a lot of history behind the camellia oil of how they used it um you know centuries ago and the geishas used it for their skin because of course the the product on their skin was very you know the caked makeup um and so it was to how to look after their skin under all of this you know this excessive makeup and the hair and um and so that's sort of where it came from and it is so rich in vitamins and antioxidants and it's just this beautiful very simple because i got a lot of sickness through mine so a lot of them that smelt quite strong just turned my stomach you know the thought of having it on me i mean wash powder the smell of fresh washing used to make me sick so you know the thought of putting something on that was heavily perfumed was like no (laughs) So that's where, where it's come from. And it is literally from me using it and not having any stretch marks um, that's made me so passionate about it because it works. And you know, and it's like, it really works. And we've had people trying it and uh, have had, we've had one of the, one of the women came back to me and she said, I've got no more new stretch marks through this pregnancy. So it's that right. So you've had stretch marks from previous. She said, oh yeah, but no new ones from this one. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. that's amazing. It's, taken a, it's a whole holistic approach. Like I'm mad about that. Like what's going on in your skin, how that's yeah. affecting you. And yeah, I just love that you've taken that whole holistic approach. And you're so right, aren't you? Most people whose parents or mum, shall I say, have had stretch marks, it generally follows on. Like my yeah. mum had none. I don't really have any as well, but then you see someone else and it, seems quite genetic so it's amazing that you found something that's helping people i will put the link for the site as well i'll put links for the lady and the site so people can go check that out um but yeah it sounds so good and do you get the body brush as well as part of the set yeah so it's a body brush you need to be using the body brush because that's basically you want to feed the skin from the inside and also from the outside so on the inside if you body brush increases circulation that circulation then feeds the skin it helps with the collagen it helps with the elastin so that's a really big part of it Um, and you need to be doing it i mean i was doing it twice a day um and and i think it was partly because obviously the stretch marks have a partly you know when you're itchy as your bump gets bigger and you get that sort of like oh it's just (laughs) small yeah just like holding it holding your bump in so just be able to use the um the brush on your skin it feels lovely and then to put the oil on the top as well it then that's feeding it from the outside so you've got that double um, effect really um and yeah it just it makes sense we've always body brushed in the salon it's what you do and you know the reason is to increase circulation it's it's great for great for detoxing as well uh, great for cellulite so all these things that like, well it kind of makes sense to use your body brush on your bump you know it is yeah. it just it was just the right thing to do but like phil says is i don't realize the information that i have that makes perfect sense to me but if you don't know about body brushing then you know it doesn't exist then, does it? So, so yeah, so that's where it's all stemmed from. And yeah, it's fantastic. And it's the start of this. And there's definitely, I, I love making different products. And, you know, in the salons, we have the lip balms that I make at home that we give out to people. So instead of sweets, they get a little lip balm through winter when your skin's really dry. I love that whole thing of seeing what's inside a product and how can you make it better? How can you, um, you know, use as natural products as you possibly can so that's definitely a route my route now is uh is down down that way now that's it and i think it's just nice to educate people isn't it you know yeah, absolutely. for eight years i think from just being a mum and, and a new mum and realizing what was in products i was not only putting on me but my new baby at the time i was horrified and i think that's what's really driven me throughout all of my business is it's educating people and just showing them a safer way isn't it um so yeah I can't wait to share the link so people can go take a look no more babies for me so unfortunately I won't be able to enjoy it <laughs> you've got more than enough <laughs> yeah, 
I keep people keep saying to me, "You're going to have any more?" I was like, "No, I can't keep them alive. At three, I can just about keep alive. I don't think I could with a fourth. Oh, I, don't- gosh, I did live on that the other day. I was like, I had this realization. They were all messing around on the school road, being very dangerous and quite out of character. They are wild anyway, my children. But I had this like, oh my gosh, I am responsible for all your lives. Like, please just listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a mum moment. Um, so what else did I want to ask you? I think, I think that is probably about it. I would just say for anyone watching this, Keris, there might be people that are in business, that the world is affecting people in very different ways right now. Some people are thriving, some people are, are, are literally surviving. Um, but for someone maybe that's thinking about starting a business or they're in those early days, is there anything you could say to them, whether it's, ways to support their mindset or just any words of wisdom that might keep um, them on <laughs> do it. no i'm kidding <laughs> get out while you can <laughs> I, I think it's about the journey isn't it and there's no because there's no end goal really because when you get to that you want something else and and so there isn't an end goal there's no no matter what stage you get at, you know, when I was, um, I, I rented a room and I was like, oh, the thought of having like a little salon of mine would be amazing. And then I got to that and then I'm like, oh, and now I want staff. So then you get to that and then it's like, oh, and I want a bigger salon. So then you get to that and it's like, oh, now I want a second salon. And so it's a never ending goal. You know, this, this um, it's kind of the holy grail, isn't it? It just, you just keep on going. And I think the biggest thing is, is you've got to enjoy the journey of it and the good and the bad. You've got to keep going. And that that Monday morning feeling um, and you see all of these, oh, God, it's Monday again. And I don't get that because I love the challenge. I love of like, right, what's going to happen this week? Where are we going to be by the by Friday? What are we going to achieve? Are we not going to achieve it? Because sometimes you go backwards and that's OK as well. Um, I think the biggest thing, and it's it's my trait, which Phil laughs at, is I just get on with it. Just do it. Just do it. Stop thinking about it. Stop trying to plan everything because I think people can overthink and overplan and overdo it where then they don't ever do it. So I think the biggest thing is, is and again, going back to the failure, do it. And then if it's not quite right, change it a bit and do it again and and that's the biggest thing is just just do it because the more you think about something the scarier it becomes you know and and the harder it becomes as well because you put we're our own worst enemy aren't we we put obstacles in our in our way that we don't really they don't exist we just think oh well I can't do that because of this and because of that and some things are valid you know don't get me wrong but a lot of the times it's just us putting that in the way, a reason to not do it. So do it. And if you've enjoyed doing that, if you've enjoyed that path, then stay on it and keep going. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. So, because I say it to Phil all the time, because he, he thinks about things a lot. And I'm like, oh God, will you just get on with it? <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <Don't worry about laughs> it. <laughs> Very much a just do it person. It's different personality types, isn't it? Um... And that was amazing, Kerry. It's just to like say, say all those words of wisdom off the cuff. Um, it, it is fear, isn't it? That's the biggest thing. And um, you can look at it as that false evidence appearing real. I always, if I find myself that I'm getting really nervous about something and holding myself back, I just think it's not real. Stop making up the story. And um, I did a post on this last night, actually. It's think about the possibilities and what could go right over what can go wrong. Because yeah. You know, it's just as easy to think positive as it is negative. In fact, I think it takes more energy um, to, to think negative. Just kind of focus on what can go right and go for it. Oh, we all do that thing where, you know, when like you're going to take something back to a shop and you're like, right, so I'm going to say this and then they'll say that. And, and you, you have this whole conversation in your head doing, that's not real. And then you get there and go, oh, right, I want to take this. And you're going like in a mood because in your head, they've had an argument with you they haven't they don't know who you are and you take it back and they go okay and you kind of go oh thank you and that's it because you have made all of this up in your head this 
this is going to be bad and angry and upset and all these emotions. And most of the time, they're not actually there. And like you say, it is about going, let's do the positive and see what we're getting from it. Good, bad, you know, whatever comes out of it, you all, there's always a lesson to learn, isn't there? Absolutely. And that's why we're here, isn't it? There's <laughs> lots of lessons and enjoy the journey. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for today, Keris. It's been amazing. It's just lovely to see your face again. And oh, and you. Lovely. I'd like to see you in person soon when we can all get out and about. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for having me. It has been lovely. And um, yeah, any questions or anything, if anyone wants to ask, then just send them my way. Um, but yeah, it's been lovely to chat with you. Oh, you too. Right, goodbye, everyone on Facebook, and we'll see you all soon.